Hi, I'm Steve Williams, and this is Scooter in the Sticks. It's snowing again, and I thought while I was out riding on the Vespa that maybe I can make a video that looks back at the past 15 years of year-round riding I've done. And for those of you who want to ride in winter or in cold weather, I would review a little bit about what's involved in this kind of stuff here and uh, give you an overview of my experience riding in winter. Okay. Something doesn't sound right on the scooter. I hear some kind of squeal. I'm gonna have to take a look at that. Sounds like the belt, maybe. But anyway, man, mid-April and we're still dealing with snow. I can't suggest or advise anyone to ride in snow or on ice. Dealing with cold temperatures on their own is challenging enough. Whatever your decision regarding winter riding might be, there are some important points to keep in mind. First, there is a greater risk of physical injury when riding in winter. It's simple to understand why. Traction can be reduced, visibility can be reduced for the rider and drivers of other vehicles, and the physical stress of cold weather can impair riding skills and judgment. Even with careful road strategy, effective skills, and the right equipment, winter is still a challenge and comes with increased risk. But with your eyes wide open, and if you are completely honest in regard to your skills and abilities, if you decide you're going to ride in winter, I'll share a few things that I found helpful. So, I'm off to pick up some lunch. Gear. Seems every rider I meet is obsessed with gear. Gear to support their picture of the ideal ride on the ideal motorcycle. When it comes to riding in cold weather, gear is critical. Anything less than ideal spells misery at least in my experience. It matters what you wear and it matters what you ride. Cold weather introduces constant learning opportunities. Like the fancy plastic bag around my GoPro Hero 8 in the media mod box. It's not waterproof. For me, the goal of the gear I wear is to keep me warm and dry it sounds simple, but it took me years to get to the point that I could predict how long I could stay warm on a ride. It's one thing at 50 degrees, quite another at 10 below zero Fahrenheit. My solution was water resistant, insulated jacket and pants, heavy insulated boots, heavy electric gloves, neck gaiter, full face helmet, and lots of layers underneath for the really cold rides. If I could stay warm, then a winter ride was as satisfying as a summer one. You'll need to figure out your personal temperature limits and the gear you'll need. I think I'll find some shelter down here. Almost all my winter riding experience has been on Vespa scooters. I've ridden a lot of motorcycles on cold, dry days, but for winter, those days that found me caught in sudden snow squalls or faced with ice on the road, those were all met on a scooter. My feeling is that if you're going to ride where you may find yourself facing the slippery stuff in addition to cold temperatures, you need to consider a few things. 
whatever you ride, you should be able to easily flat foot and be able to easily manage to duck walk the machine. For instance, I was riding on a morning after a previously warm day. Snow was melting and water had run across the road in a lot of places. By the next morning, the temperature had dropped below freezing and the water formed extensive sheets of ice. It was incredibly slippery and I had a hard time walking across it. I had to duck walk the scooter across and save it a couple times from slipping out from under me. If you're going to ride with the possibility of this sort of situation, you need to ride something you can handle physically. In addition, I found it extremely helpful to be able to armor the scooter against the cold. When I started, I had no protection other than what I wore. No electrics. Even the heaviest winter riding gloves were no match for the wind when the temperatures dropped below 20 degrees. I found myself stopping along the road to warm my hands on the headlight or muffler often doing this every five to ten miles. It was miserable. Electric gloves eventually helped a little, but even they were no match for the wind. Eventually the handlebar muffs and heated grips came to my rescue. I could easily handle 20 degree weather with my normal riding gloves. Add the electric gloves to the mix and I could ride all day at 10 below zero without my hands getting cold. The eventual addition of the apron made things even more comfortable. I resisted these changes for a long, long time. And when I finally made them, I kicked myself for being so stubborn. There's a lot to think about when riding in winter, especially if snow and ice is involved. One thing a lot of people don't consider is the toll that salt and grit take on their scooter or motorcycle. It's pretty brutal. So if you like a pristine machine, it's best to stay out of the winter. Um, a lot of the other stuff has to do with managing risk. Uh, you definitely need the right temperament to ride in winter. If you're someone who's seduced by the throttle, likes to go fast, lean um, over, then winter isn't for you. Riding in winter, especially in snow and ice, really becomes a puzzle to solve, which involves going slow, stopping to consider how you might get through one obstacle, and the next and that kind of thing. Uh, one of the other things is you have to consider the weather you might be faced so you can't just jump on and go. You really need to look ahead and, and see what's going to happen. And the other thing is you got to think about the riding environment you're in. I'm blessed to be in an area with relatively low traffic roads so I don't have to worry about keeping up with traffic or things like that. If I lived in an urban or suburban area, I doubt I would ride in winter. And I guess the final thing I'll say is you really need to ask yourself why you're doing this. For me, it just happened by accident. I started riding, so the weather got colder, I didn't want to stop, and I kept riding. And uh, I'm not sure that was the the most intelligent approach, but that was mine. Um, I certainly, after a while, it became an adventure. And, you know, some people adventure by riding across continents or uh, through heavy off-road stuff, but that's not what I did. Anyway, um, that sort of wraps up this episode of Scooter in the Sticks. Uh, if you have other questions, leave them in the comments. I try to respond to everything. And until then, uh, be well, ride safe, and enjoy the much warmer weather that's coming now.